Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Urban sketching is something that I've been passionate about for the past few years now. So I decided to read the book called The Urban Sketcher to improve my own sketching outdoors. Today I wanna to share with you my thoughts from the book and what my main takeaways are from it and how you can use these concepts for your own urban sketching habit. So if you're unfamiliar with urban sketching, it's kind of just a way to create art outside and to, you know, draw or paint on location in kind of a spontaneous and rapid manner. It's a way to create a feeling of a place in your art. And there's a few methods you can kind of use to create art on location like this. Many people use graphite, pen and ink, watercolors, or a mixture of those three. So I think this book is very well thought out, and I think the tone is very friendly, encouraging, down to earth, very motivating. You know, from the very beginning of the book, he talks about not worrying about how your sketches turn out, to not focus on the outcome. Uh, he says the main thing you should do is just focus on quantity. Judge yourself on the quantity, not on the quality of your sketches in the beginning. And I think this is just like a huge game changer and help for beginners, especially for myself as well, even as an intermediate type of artist. I think this is really a valuable lesson to focus on, the quantity at first of your sketches over the quality. I found myself becoming pretty excited while reading this and I felt hugely inspired to go out and just start sketching outdoors. You know, at times it was it was hard to keep reading because I wanted to just stop and go create, you know, just go out there and start sketching something. And to me, that's kind of a sign that this book is effective. You know, it's resonating with me, all the things he's saying in this book. And I also like how the book looked. Like I like how the pages were designed. It was really whole artistic kind of feel to it. And also showing his art throughout the book. It's just like hugely inspiring and motivating to see that. So this book is broken down into three main sections. The first section being graphite, the second being pen and ink, and the last section being watercolor. And one thing that stood out to me throughout the entire book was his concept and kind of the use of this three-step process or the three-step method for any using any of these mediums. And I think breaking it down, any kind of process, whether it's graphite, pen and ink, watercolor, breaking it down into this three-step process of how to use them really simplifies it. And I think it makes it so much easier and less daunting to kind of approach sketching outdoors. You're no longer blindly drawing or painting anymore. You're no, you're no longer wondering what to do next or is the sketch done or not because the process is mostly planned out already. Just follow the three steps and boom, you're there. Now the three steps are different depending on which medium, whether it's graphite or pen and ink or watercolors, but I'll share with you the pen and ink method at least so you can kind of understand uh, what this kind of three step process entails. So first for pen and ink is to just script the scribble or kind of the blocking in process the pencil. Uh, just get something down on the paper of your subject. And then step two is to use the ink and do the contour lines, something he calls calligraphic line work. So just make it, you know, not too accurate or anything, just rapidly draw in the line work. And then the final stage is to use a brush pen or some kind of thicker pen to fill in the darkest darks, the blacks, the spot blacks of your subject. And by doing this, when you follow these three steps and you see it in action, you can see that it really creates solidity and dimensionality to your sketches. And that's what I really love about this book is that each of these processes and all the concepts are really broken down and simplified, easy, easy to digest, easy to implement in the real world with my own work. You know, it's effective. And I think that's really important when it comes to something as challenging as painting outside. If you can turn off your internal critic and judge yourself only by quantity, you will have discovered the true path to mastery. So this is an idea that I really love and it's something that I've been trying to incorporate in my own work as well. You know, this year I've been uh, been drawing a lot of owl drawings and even uh, sketching my cat from life a lot. Of, and I know that not every sketch will be good. There's a lot that are <laughs> very terrible. It doesn't look that good, but I've been trying to just focus on quantity for now and just try to sketch a lot and fill up a lot of pages of my cat. I have a personal motto, don't document, design. Don't just draw what is in front of you. Design what you put down in response to what you see. It's funny to think about this now, but I can remember a time many years ago, even on this YouTube channel, where I used to always say, paint what you see rather than what you know. And something I realized over the years is that there's many stages to an artistic journey, especially when you're just starting out. At that time back then, I needed to just draw what I saw, paint what I saw. But nowadays, I can see that I'm able to modify my subject more easily and more simply. It's something that you have to continually practice at and work at, and eventually you'll slowly improve over time. 
Just remember, the areas you spend the most time on will also be the areas people spend the most time looking at. This is a great reminder and a huge help from keeping yourself from overworking your art. I mean, we've all been there, right? You're sitting there drawing something or painting something, and eventually you're adding in all these little details to everything on the painting that doesn't even matter. And what this quote is telling us is that, hey, figure out a focal point. Where do you want people to look? What is interesting to you? Focus on that, put all your time, the detail, the contrast, your effort into that area and let the rest kind of be secondary. Let that be your focal point. That's what you want people to notice. That's what you want people to look at. You want to create a strong piece of art with a central focus and have everything else be secondary to that focal point. I would definitely recommend this book to any artist that is interested in painting or drawing or sketching on location. If you're interested in urban sketching, especially if you're interested in pen and ink or watercolor, this book will definitely help you understand how to create a spontaneous sketch that captures the feel of the place that you are at. And I know for myself personally, I can say that a few years ago, it definitely helped me improve my watercolors painting on location. But with all that said, there's one thing I feel that's missing from this book, and it's kind of my only criticism in this book, is that when it comes to painting on location or even drawing on location, he doesn't really touch much on the logistics of it. How do you actually set up and paint? He does talk about it a little bit. He does show some photos and materials. He does give a little explanation, but I feel that it could have gone a little more in depth into it because a lot of beginners struggle the most with that aspect of painting on location. They struggle with how am I going to actually set up? Do I need a tripod? Do I need a push shot box? Do I need this? What do I need? How do I do it? I feel in this book, it's just a little too small in that area. Other than that, it's a really great book. I think it doesn't really take away from the book. Um, he kind of explains how he does it, but he doesn't really offer any more suggestions other than that. So I felt that area was a little bit lacking. But the rest of the book is outstanding when it comes to how to do sketches, how to paint, how to do pen and ink, all this stuff. Really great concepts throughout the entire book. So I would highly recommend you read this book and put into practice all the concepts and techniques that he talks about. So let me know what other books you'd like me to read and review. And uh, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments. Let me know. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. I make videos on productivity, creativity, art, drawing, painting, all kinds of stuff. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Take care of yourself. Peace, my friends.